Okay, so thank you for joining us. As you might have seen in the chat, we have um, a handout available. Um, it goes over um, the same slides that we'll cover next. You'll have access through that handout to any hyperlinks that you might see, so website links that you might see in the slides. Um, also um, available in there is a download link for the live example that I'll be doing as well. Okay, so first we'll talk about what Dynamo is. So Autodesk Dynamo is a visual programming language. Um, it allows you to control both the BIM uh, parameter aspects for schedules. So what you parameters you might have uh, currently have difficulty editing, or maybe they're just too many parameters to, to edit in the time you're allotted. And um, also for creating complex geometric uh, shapes. So it's uh, two levels. So usually as you first get started using it, you would use it just to manipulate those parameters you see in schedules. And then the second level is for complex geometric shapes where um, you're still using it to control parameters, but rather than parameters like names or types um, for whatever it is you're creating, you're controlling the X, Y, and Z locations. So you can have it do offsets and such automatically for you. So the main purpose of it is to help you out with those mundane tasks and help automate work that you could do in Revit. Um, it would just take a lot more time to do it manually. Okay, so first we'll learn a little bit of vocabulary about uh, how the visual programming is done in Dynamo. And then we'll do a live example uh, for how to takes room names that might have been typed in in uh, sentence tense, so uppercase first letter and then all lowercase and turn it into all uppercase. So when we use Dynamo, um, we're really placing nodes, which are discrete functions. So each node does one specific task and then you kind of string them together, string together their inputs and outputs to create kind of a, a larger uh, function or tool. And in those files that we create in Dynamo are called graphs, G, uh, graphs with a G. And then um, to test out our graphs, we can uh, tell it to run automatically or run manually um, at the same time Revit is open. Okay, so now I'll switch over to my other screen where I have set up a Revit project. This is just one of the sample projects that I adjusted slightly. And all of the example files are saved at the moment to Revit 2018 in case you are um, using an older version. Right now I'm using it in 2018.3. Uh, okay, so let's take a look first just at Revit. So I have opened here just my Revit project and here you can see my room labels. They're all typed in lowercase, but let's say um, we're, we, when we want to print it out, um, we have to adhere to some city standard or just a general standard that you have to have it in all uppercase. In uh, Revit, Dynamo typically needs to be installed separately. It can be installed uh, two different ways. One is called Dynamo Studio, which just comes with uh, what, uh, subscriptions to Revit in the AEC collection. Or you can install it just as the Dynamo core from the main uh, Dynamo website, which I have a uh, link to at the, the very last slide of our presentation here. So to use Dynamo, we use it at the same exact time. So I'll open it so that way we can see the two together here. So you can imagine it works a lot. It's a lot easier to use if you have two screens because you have to have them both open at the same time. And Revit, you usually have it taking over your whole screen. So it's uh, you get a little bit of overlap here. So we'll just try to manage it. So hopefully we can still see some items in our Revit project as they change. So I have here, I'll open the uppercase Dynamo graph I created. 
I created this at, from um, a set of instructions that was provided from an Autodesk University presentation uh, by uh, Marcelo Scambulari. So he's been having like official Autodesk University presentations uh, for, for several years now. Uh, so this is with uh, some of a, a guide that he had. And so as you get started, this might be the most useful one you use. And it's nice and simple. So that way um, you can kind of begin to dissect this. And then um, after you become familiar with this one, then you can take on looking at uh, more complex example files and, and also creating your own. OK, so um, here, these gray boxes, those are your nodes. So those are your kind of short functions. And then I've color coded them or grouped them. So that way we can get an idea of what are the inputs, where the um, replacing, so the manipulation of the name list is, is occurring. And then at the end, where the actual action is taking place in Revit. OK, so as you as you use Dynamo, it's, it's generally recommended to always run. So as you're working on any Dynamo graphs to run in manual mode, that way you get to decide by hitting the run button when it takes effect on your Revit project. Usually by default, as you first get started, the default is set to automatic. So when you first start using Dynamo, that's going to be your first thing to do to so set it to manual. Okay, so just kind of looking at it a little more closely. So in the inputs, I've uh, started a search. So all of these nodes, as the names you see them here, are all found in your library here on the left in Dynamo. I've uh, installed a couple um, kind of extra libraries. Um, anything that you might uh, see on my screen that you do not see on yours, I just acquired those. But if you scroll down to the library, and go to the add, you can search for different packages, library packages from the, the Dynamo community. For the most part, you don't actually browse through these little sections here. Instead, it's a lot easier to type in the name of what you're looking for. Like if I have a general idea that I want to filter through the categories you might find in a Revit project, I'll just type in categories. And then you can see these are all the parameters related to finding categories. And then to bring in one of these, you can double click or drag and drop. And then from there, kind of strung together several different nodes to extract out that information for all those elements, find um, the inputs for a particular property or parameter for the names of those rooms. And then I manipulate the list. I take the list, change it to a string, so just basic text. And then I use a specific node here, a specific function to take that text and turn it into all uppercase. So it revises the list, creates a new list. And then it goes back around here now to our action node where then it revisits all those elements and then just assigns a new value for that name parameter. So let's see it take effect. So I'm going to um, kind of make this a little bit smaller so that way we can see our room labels in the background. But when I click run, you'll see those automatically update. So that's the advantage of using Dynamo. It takes mundane tasks where you'd have to go in, double click um, for all of your rooms for all of the labels and all of your views because remember room tags might be view specific um, it just takes finds all of those and then replaces them so you can imagine the effect you can have not just with rooms but other objects um, a little quick change i can make here um, so right now it's sorting for the parameter for rooms but um, let's take a look at all these views so all these views are lowercase as well maybe um, it's decided we have to move to all uppercase for views. I can easily take my uppercase Dynamo graph and just revise two little inputs here. So the categories, I just decide, okay, now I want to revise views. So I'll change the category from rooms 
two views. And you can use sometimes type in in here as well, and it'll find or sort through for you. So I'll switch that to views. And then the property to look for, so the parameter name to look for, for if you want to change the name of views is, of course, view name. So it's the same property you would see listed out for when you want to manually go and change that, that value. So now with these two altered, I'll run it again. It'll ask us, uh, this, so this is a Revit dialog box. Do I want to rename the corresponding levels and views? I'll hit yes. And then I'll wait a moment. And then you could see it goes through all of my views and does that for me. So I don't have to go in and right click rename all of those. Okay, so that's kind of just a brief example of how you can get started with Dynamo. Um, things that I've created, so just kind of so that you can imagine what things that you could create as well. Um, I'll go back to my home screen here in Dynamo. So if we see anything in my recents, um, I have for renumbering devices, so kind of re say the mark value gets off by a few, you can create a new list of numbers and apply those as properties to devices that are placed. Um, you can also use these to rename or renumber grid lines if you have a lot of those in a model. Um, so for the most part, I've, I've uh, extensively used this with just parameters. Um, though you can use it kind of in more complex visual levels, you can create kind of interesting shaped masses. Um, so, so Revit mass families for if you're creating like a really flowing looking roof or building, and then you can apply different uh, dynamo graphs to it to help you place structural beams. Um, at the end of our uh, handout that I have with the, the webinar slides, it has um, kind of what I filtered out as some of the uh, kind of most interesting AU presentations that go over examples such as the structural um, and a few from interior architectural. Okay, so we'll continue back with the slides. Okay, so we saw all those nodes in action with Revit. So next we'll talk about how do you get Autodesk Dynamo. So Autodesk Dynamo Studio, again, that comes with um, any subscriptions you might already have to Revit and or the AEC collection. Uh, Revit, sorry, uh, Dynamo Studio is available for subscriptions separately, but really that's only for if you want to use Dynamo by itself on a computer that you do not have Revit on. So it's only if you are doing maybe some uh, Dynamo library development on a computer you do not have Revit installed. But otherwise, um, yeah, you would just rely on your subscription for Revit or the AEC collection to get that. Um, I see a question here. Does Dynamo work with AutoCAD or Inventor? Uh, I do not believe so from the, there could be recent news, um, but uh, I might have to get back to you on that one. But at the moment, I do not believe so. I'm just going to do a quick look up. looks like some things might be possible. So Dynamo is, for example, it's compatible with um, writing to Excel or text files or so Word docs, um, so, or, but mostly Excel is what's used. Um, but so you might be able to take some information from Excel sheets and then route them back in. And it, oh, thank you, John. So you were able to confirm that for me. So if you're able to kind of create a connection maybe with an Excel sheet to back to your AutoCAD, that would be um, kind of the, the only option. Okay, so back to the back to the slides here. 
the Dynamo as it runs inside of Revit. So not Dynamo Studio. So Dynamo Studio is a separate program that you could use on its own without Revit launch um, or even installed on the computer. Um, though uh, Dynamo, just as a single name, Dynamo, it's also referred to sometimes as Dynamo Sandbox. Uh, that is an open source product that was created at first it was outside of Autodesk. I believe in my resources here, the, the website for where you could go to download that. And they also have an archive for all different years of the Dynamo sandboxes from dynamobim.org. So again, that's how you can um, download it. So if you already have a script subscription, just go with Dynamo Studio. It'll install the, the Dynamo sandbox for you calls it, I believe it, Autodesk calls it the Dynamo Core. Um, but if you if you um, don't need the standalone Dynamo Studio, you could potentially install just the, the Dynamo Sandbox. Okay, so um, here we are at my last slide. So what I have here is um, some, some inf extra information for you. So, so you want to learn more about Dynamo. There's a great resource, number of resources on um, the Dynamo website, so dynamobim.org, and um, the creator of Dynamo is um, Ian Kiel, and he, um, he has a blog on there as well where he kind of creates articles for new things. Autodesk University has a few years of uh, Dynamo presentation videos and example files built up as well. So these three are the ones where I thought it was like a good representation of a couple different disciplines. So we have um, some complex ones you can see for structure, so manipulating structural properties. And also these are like examples of um, how you could use it for um, kind of some intricate designs. And uh, the Interior design example here is uh, a pretty good one. It's I see interior designers use this uh, type of uh, line work where they have like an offset line outside of a wall to help specify what the material or texture will be. So for accent walls, they have to kind of kind of highlight and say what the wall treatment will be. But in Revit, there isn't really a good tag for this already besides just so you'd have to either manually draw lines or there's a Dynamo script for that. So to create like an offset line with a return lines back to the wall for you. How do you get involved with the Dynamo community? So the Dynamo community, again, it's completely open source. You don't have to have a subscription or anything to access it. Um, there have um, some Dynamo graphs available on GitHub, a popular programming website. Um, also, uh, directly from the Dynamo website, dynamobim.org, or you can also follow the Dynamo creators on Twitter.